Hello everybody. So today I want to show off the, a project that I finished uh, maybe a week ago or a bit more. And what it is, is it is a, well what is it? I don't know. Well, let me show you first and see if you can guess what this is. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, if you didn't guess. The idea was that I wanted to boost up my camera to a higher level. Basically, I have this really nice tripod. It's a Coleman Nanomax 430T, 430T. Coleman Nanomax 430T. I really like it, it's high quality, it's very durable. Uh, everything works very nice, it's smooth. However, it's kind of short. Well, especially when I don't have it fully extended but well now it's fully extended and you can see it's a pretty low tripod um, so I wanted to boost it up so I could use it more on my projects and look down on the the tables especially that one over there which is a bit higher and I just couldn't really do that properly with this one so I was forced to use the one which the camera is on now which is a very low quality tripod. It's hard to even get it tilted left to right correctly. I had to super glue a bunch of stuff. It's, that's really a cheap, cheap tripod and it's a pain to use. Um, so I thought maybe if I could simply boost, it, <clears throat> excuse me, if I could uh, boost this up a little bit, then that would solve the problem. And it actually works pretty good. This camera is uh, the camera I used to use to make videos. It's a Canon uh, 1200D. It's a good camera, but it has no audio input, and it, the screen does not flip out. And in addition, it only shoots 720p, uh, I believe. So you just uh, you just um, put the camera on the top, like so, as the uh, standard quarter 20 threads. And I left this thread down here on just in case in the future I might have some reason to use that, but probably won't need that. So then the camera is on the tripod, like so. And let me go ahead and put the legs out. Whoops. Oh, that, that there, what you saw happen, can be a problem, I've noticed. If I don't have this very tight, uh, because the way the weight is, it can, it can tilt over. So I have to remember tighten that down pretty strong. And if I do, then it's perfectly fine for indoor uh, stuff like this, you know, <clears throat> indoor shop stuff. Um, but then like that, then I can just use the, uh, the function the, of the tripod like normal to rotate it or tilt it. Of course the geometry is a little bit different now, now that it's the, the center of the pivot is much lower than it used to be, you know, relative to the camera. So you get kind of a different effect. And it is true if I tilt down too much, it won't, I won't be able to lock it. The weight will be too great. Um, but luckily with this tripod, there happens to be a rim here, so I can, kind of rest, rested on that rim and that works pretty good too for shooting down on this table if I need to tilt that low. Yeah, it's definitely not perfect. It would be better to have the higher tripod, but I think for in the shop, this is gonna, this is gonna help a lot. Now, when I made it, I, you may be wondering what this protrusion is and what this is about. Um, when I made it, I started thinking that maybe I would wanna use this also off of the tripod so let me show you what that's about. So to take it off, it has uh, threads on the bottom, so you just loosen your um, loosen your tripod or however it works and just unthread it like normal. And then you have just this together with the camera. Um, so then I thought maybe I would want to just sit the camera on, the, on a surface and use it. And maybe I would like it to tilt down or up a little bit. So what I kind of have is a, I don't know, it's kind of like a tripod. You have this bottom surface here, then you have the kind of the third leg here, which can be adjusted to tilt the thing up or back or forward. Let me give you a little demonstration. All right, so here's the camera on its little booster pod. I don't know what to call it. And uh, as you can see now, it's shooting slightly upward, but not too much. If I want to... Uh, you know, raise it up a little bit. I just turn this this bolt, these uh, two nuts on it. And it starts to tilt it back. I don't think it can fall back. Obviously, it depends on what camera you have and what lens set you have. But yeah, even all the way maxed out, the camera will not uh, 
will not fall backwards. And then probably more useful would be tilting down. I can imagine if I wanted this on my bigger work table over there, maybe to look across uh, the table down at something, I may want it tilted down rather than up. So for that, I'm going to turn it the other way and just let it go all the way down and see, see how that looks. That's pretty much as low as it's going to go. So with that, you got the camera looking down, tilted down a little bit. How many degrees? I don't know. I never bothered to check. Let me see if I can give you a nice side profile to get a better idea what angle that's at. Face the camera down now. This becomes a little bit less stable and maybe I shouldn't have rounded these corners. I just thought it looked better, but because now I can kind of feel it's more easy to tip, but I imagine if I would have had the corners there, it would have provided a more stable platform. But as it is, it's fine as long as you don't mess with it. I doubt I'll really use this uh, feature all that much, but it could be handy. The only negative to it is it does add more weight onto the front, which can also cause a problem because the tri when it's on the tripod, that's again giving more weight to the front. And it's already front heavy due to the you know already set up mass of the uh, camera and the way it hangs. So I don't know if I'll use this. If I don't use it much, I may just chop it off. And but maybe I'll use it, and we'll we'll just see what happens. Anyway, go ahead and uh, continue watching, and you can see how I put this thing together, if you want. Don't have to. All right, bye. So the hole on the right I forgot to use like a piece of backing board to uh, avoid the chip out and the one on the left I did remember so obviously huge difference gotta remember that. Of course the important part here is to make sure that you're tapping this you know as straight up and down as possible. Don't want it going in there crooked. I've done this a lot of times but every time I do it I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I'm doing something wrong. It's going pretty easy. Like I said, this hole is a little bit smaller than what it should be. But being that this is just wood, I figured that would be okay. It should the tap should be able to, you know, push the wood out enough. It's actually going easier than I expected. Alright, now it's going. It looks like it's pretty straight, so that's good. And with this type of tapered tap, you have to make sure that you go all the way past. And then take some sawdust and kind of put it on top and mix it in. Very good. Okay, now I'm just going to cut it off down here. I don't actually have the right type of glue or epoxy, so I'm going to try to use my wood glue. And if it doesn't work, it's okay, then I can take it out and buy some something that will work later. By the way, the filled in extra dust came out pretty nice, actually. I sanded it, and yeah, you can definitely tell something's going on there, but it doesn't look too bad either.
Okay, it's starting to protrude. Let me go ahead and measure that. See if that's where we need it to be. Okay, now I have my two pieces, the bottom and the top. So now I just need to cut and measure some of this 12 diameter wood. And then once I get it to the length I want, I need to turn down the ends a little bit because it's 12 millimeter, but these holes are 10 millimeter. I don't have any 12 millimeter drills, so I'm gonna turn the ends of it down on the table saw and then I can glue them in. Okay, so I have my pieces of the rod turned down at the end, right here in the middle, and at this end. Next, I'm gonna cut this in half here in the middle, and cut this end off here. Then I should have the pieces I need.